Hello and welcome to level 38 of the Thoughts and Players podcast, the gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy here with my two compadres once again. I have David. What up? And I have Corey. You cried. Okay. <laughs> David should know it. I. What is it from? It's Final Fantasy X. Little boy at the beginning talking to Tetis. These are cried. these these are just getting ridiculous. I okay. know. I really just. You need to find me a new gimmick, okay? I'm not going to come I, into the episode saying hello or what's up. So I need I did, something. I didn't cry at that. So you're right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Moving on. Uh, Moving on, uh, we uh, we are glad that you have joined us for level 38. We are uh, on the precipice of our 40s. Don't know what that's going to be like, but I guess, you know, looking forward to it. A new level, a new year, a new, a new uh, uh, opportunity for growth, as they say, right? So, um, ladies and gentlemen, chicken, ducks, and hens, a little bit in reverse. We're glad you're with us. We are going to move on to the news which, of course, of course, we call the morning announcements. And for today's level, we have four items on the board. So let's go through them with news item number one. It was revealed, announced, shown, coming through in a, from a black hole, I believe, in the trailer or something, that Sora has arrived as the last DLC character on Super Smash Bros. Brawl Ultimate. The Ultimate. There you go. Um, yeah, that was the reveal. We had some guesses. I, I can't remember. Did did any of us guess Sora? No. No. Right. Um, so it showed Sora. Um, it seemed like a lot of people were excited, and then a lot of people also weren't. Uh, but, yep. you know, there you go. Guys, uh, Corey, I know you're... you're a, a huge participant in the Smash community. What, what was the rea- how? What's your reaction, and what has been the reaction? I think it it was a great reveal. I think Sora is an icon in gaming. You know, yeah. Kingdom Hearts at this yeah. point has I think I something like ten games. Um, there's been plenty of them on the Nintendo system. You know, none of the mainline ones until Story Number Three. But uh, yeah, Sora is really cool to join. It's like the fourth fourth square enix character which is kind of weird because i felt like yeah, some yeah. other companies might have got a little bit more love um mm-hmm. also a big part of sora is his connection to disney and there was no no looks at donald or goofy they're just not in here there was a mickey mouse uh a keychain on his keyblade and that was it for the disney participation um also the music selection was kind of weak uh, only four songs entered for that. Obviously, none of the Disney classics. Uh, Simple and Clean wasn't part of that, which is that iconic, you know, uh, first song for Kingdom Hearts 1. But overall, I think it's a really good character to get in. I think it pleases the Japanese fans and the American fans. You know, someone like Master Chief would have been great. I don't think Japan cares about Master Chief. And at the end of the day, it's a Japanese-made game. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty cool. I'm pretty cool about it. How about you guys? Um, I think people were upset with Sora because it wasn't Waluigi. And if Waluigi was put in there instead of someone else, I don't think there would be any backlash, to be honest. But, yeah, I think Sora was a good addition. Yeah, the only thing about Waluigi is he's he's not an icon. You know, at the end of the day, he, he's a meme character. He's never been in a mainline anything, never started in his own game, so... Uh, if they were going to put him in, they should have did it at the main roster when it first came out. Yep. But, you know, I'll go ahead, Jeremy. I saw I kind of interrupted you. Um, and I wasn't going to add much. I was just going to say that I could not care less. Um, oh, yeah, you're right. That wasn't that wasn't yeah. adding much. Exactly. Yeah, it's true. Um, is, is, Did you want to add any more to that to that uh, to that news no. item? OK, no, we're okay. good. All right. Uh, let's move on to news item number two. Twitch had some info leaked, a bunch of stuff. Uh, I think the most talked about thing was the leak of the 
I guess the pay payouts to all the different streamers, right? And this was dated for 2019. If you're wondering, oh, who topped the list? Did uh, Ninja top the list? No, he didn't. XQC did. Uh, I think it was something like 9.5 million. Um, eight and a half for him. Oh, eight and a half. Think, okay. Uh, yeah, I think nine eight was the uh, biggest one. That was Critical the Role. Yeah. All right. And Critical Role, they're the ones that that hacked and got the leak and stuff, right? Oh, I don't I know believe, about that. I, I believe. Let me check and make sure. But I believe that they that they take like um, they had they had some role, I believe, in the in, a, in this a, information getting out. A critical one. A critical one. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Thank you guys. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to check and verify that. But I but they also were on there. Um. You know, taking in a bunch of money. Ninja did make the list. Trial did make the list. Um, I'm assuming people like Tim the Tatman probably made the list at one point, though they've moved on to different platforms by now. But in the 2019, this is like, you know, two years ago. So take from it what you will. Um, right. But uh, there was a bunch of other stuff that was leaked, too. Right. There was talk about. Um, about like like some operations elements of Twitch that, you know, were kind of being held back that were exposed. I don't think there was anything in there in regards to like the Dr. Disrespect band that no one can figure out. Um, yeah. The uh, the download and release online was labeled part one, so it's possible there's information uh, that they have they haven't leaked yet. Yeah. Um, and I'm you know reading that based off of an article I yeah. was reading before we started uh, recording. Yeah. But, yeah, so who who knows what else they have out there. Yeah, there's a lot of info being uh, being leaked. Check that out. I guess if you guys were able to kind of take a look at it, what was like the most surprising part of that leak, if any of it surprised you? Honestly, how much the top streamers are making. Like, I understand like they're big people and in, in whatnot, but like mm -hmm. nine and a half million, eight and a half, well, 9.8, eight and a half. Like, that's insane. Yeah. Yeah, my biggest surprise is probably the Dungeons and Dragons people being number one. You know, you think of Twitch as purely a video game watching website, and to see a D and D group, that's uh, that's kind of cool, kind of different, yeah. unexpected. Yeah, I guess yeah, that's true. The, although I could kind of see how it might work, right? I mean, right. Role playing is essentially like acting, I guess, to some extent. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but that is interesting. Uh, yeah, here we go. Twitch getting hacked. I mean, you know, I feel sorry for a lot of the people that are streamers or work on there that are part of it that may have to, you know, change passwords, worry about their security and all that other stuff. But as far as Twitch as a company, yeah, yeah, yeah they're taking a hit. <laughs> uh, news item number three Kingdom Hearts was announced as coming to Switch or for the Switch. However, it will have cloud play only. Is that what I'm understanding correctly? Yes. Yeah. Guys, are I mean, are you excited for Kingdom? I mean, we saw it. there were we didn't we, we weren't overly ecstatic for Sora. It appears. <laughs> but are we excited for Kingdom Hearts to be on Switch? No. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, no, no. I mean. I played the crap out of one and two, and I waited for three for so long. With it came out, and I just didn't care anymore. Hmm. Why does one and two have to be cloud? That's a those are PS2 games, you know. But you know, whatever. Um, it's good to see Switch getting getting games, I guess. So much shade thrown. So much shade. It's just Switch would not be the console to do cloud gaming on. That that's the last pick. I would do cloud gaming. That's on. fair. That's absolutely so, fair. so to have it on there, it's just like, no. And anyone that has a Switch, not anyone, but I feel like that's a lot of people's secondary systems. You can get Kingdom Hearts on anything. Don't, don't get it on Switch. Don't get right. it on cloud gaming. Yeah. That's that's absolutely fair. The game the game company that has probably the worst online infrastructure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then we have our final news item, news item number four. FIFA 
it's going to start asking EA for one billion dollars every four years for naming rights. Um, that sound. I'll give. I'll give my impressions at first. That sounds ridiculous, right? <laughs> but it all is ridiculous. I mean, it's EA. Take their money. But I, I kind of agree with that. But on the other hand, it's FIFA. And I don't yeah, know if FIFA you know much about FIFA. FIFA is horrible. Yeah. They are corrupt. They are they are just the worst possible. These are just two bad companies. And EA yeah. is like the better <laughs> of the yeah. bad. So, oh, wow. Uh, wow. I, I would hope they would dump FIFA. I, right. I don't think the name right, is worth mind. $1 billion. I changed, so. I changed my answer. <laughs> right. Yeah, but like. It's it's just for yeah it is it is just for naming it wouldn't be for licensing or anything like that would it or I, is that included? I think they could still take the players and like the team names because right. uh, Konami does right with Pez yeah or right now it's eFootball they still have official teams and official yeah. players but I think FIFA and possibly like the World Cup affiliation would be mm-hmm. gone so Got you could have like a World Cup mode in. FIFA or whatever, but uh, yeah, I just thought it was a funny story. You know, it's almost like uh, not even Doctor Evil asked for one billion dollars. You know, I feel like it's Doctor Evil yeah. here, <laughs> but uh, you have you yeah, have just, a bad just... guy getting extorted by a bigger bad guy. Uh, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 good times right now. Yeah, fantastic. The best result is that they both crash and burn. All right, so that ends the morning announcements. These news segment, which means we are rolling on to the round table where we talk about a single topic of discussion that we discuss. And Mm -hmm. for this roundtable, we have, I think, a pretty interesting topic. And that is our most hated game fan bases. Now, guys, as you know, listening to our show, we love video games, all right? Sometimes we hate people, some of us more than others. And sometimes we really hate the glom of people that gravitate towards a specific type of game. So we're going to talk about that. You know how it goes. We each have three that we offer that really, you know, grind our gears, as Peter Griffin would say. And so we're going to go ahead and get through them. So uh, as far as like roundtable offering, who's rearing to offer their first game fan base that they absolutely hate? And remember, we're talking hate. I can go first. That's Okay. 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 All right. So the first one, uh, you had just mentioned the franchise. You say I'm really involved in it, and that's why I kind of hate them. Uh, the mm. Super Smash Bros. <laughs> fan base. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, there's something wrong with them. I don't know. There's something that no matter who they pick in the roster, you can't please them. Mm. Uh, there's a whole bunch of like subsections of Smash Bros. where too many Fire Emblem characters, you know, and too many swordsmen, and too many this, too many that. Not enough from this game franchise and it just gets very tiring uh going on forums and reading through it's not like you can talk about the game you have to talk about what the game will become with all the dlc being added and it's just ridiculous and it wears you down and there's constantly leaks um if you ever go on a forum it's all talks about leaking of the roster leaking of the next game leaking of dlc characters obviously it's going to slow down now because the dlc is done Mm -hmm. but Arguments like this are going to last forever, you know, because there's just there's just so many different fan bases mixed in the one and they just cannot be happy. So um, I am a part of this fan base, but I try to avoid it as much as I can just because it's very tiring. Yeah. Understandable, understandable. Um, David, you want to go next? Or you want me to take it? Uh, you go ahead. OK, what you got. OK. All right. Um, my first one is going to be the Dark Souls slash Demon Souls slash Souls like game fan base. Hey guys, you aren't geniuses. Okay. <laughs> You're playing games where you have to play a boss. The boss has patterns. You have to die a bunch of times to learn the patterns so you can beat the boss. You're not geniuses. Some people just have less patience for doing it than others. It doesn't make you a gaming god. It doesn't mean that other people need to, quote-unquote, get good. It means that other people have bleat to do. 
and they don't want to die 15 to 20 times to figure out that Osiris the Blade Stormer has a slash slash dodge slash pattern instead of a slash dodge slash slash pattern. No one cares, okay? <laughs> You're not that good, okay? You just like certain games that are geared towards punishment and masochism and vague uh, uh, abstract instructions on how to play and beat the games. That's all. It doesn't make you better. It doesn't make you more skilled or anything like that. You just like a particular type of game. It's a game type. There's no increase of skill or anything to it. And the fact that you guys go, oh, get good. Oh, they don't know how to do. Oh, they don't have the skill. Oh, they don't have this and that. Get out of here. No one wants to hear that. There's been tougher games, okay? And 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 it's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous, right? That's the game. That's one of the game fan bases that absolutely gets to me, okay? I've played those games. I suck at games like that. I played those games and beat those games. Did I get good? No, because I went into the next one and sucked just as bad. So obviously I didn't get good. <laughs> I was still bad. And it's the same with you. You went into uh, Demon Souls sucking. You went into Dark Souls sucking. You went into Dark Souls 2 sucking. Did you ever just get good? No, you never got good. Okay, you just learned patterns and then played. That's it. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to get that off my chest. Yeah, I felt some uh, soul therapy life. right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, David, it's on you. Yeah, um, unlike you guys, I'm actually not a part of this community at all because I was told to never play it because of how bad the community is, and that is League of Legends. Everyone mm. that I know personally, so I can't say everybody, they hate that they play the game so much <laughs> because just how toxic everyone is in that game. And I asked my brother, he's one of them. I was like, hey, I should, you know, should I learn, you know, play with you and stuff? He's like, no. He's like, I hate myself that I play this game. <laughs> <laughs> just don't. Just stay away from it. Do yourself a favor. And I think that's just, that's just bad. Like, how are you going to have a community that toxic where players, one, hate themselves for it, and two, warn others to not even play it? Like, yeah, it's horrible. What is yeah. that? That's it, it. That's probably my biggest one. I I just started. I started strong. <laughs> if you want to back up your claim a little bit, um, they actually just banned chatting in the game. That was a new and story chatting? from like, yes, like literally, there is wow. no chatting at all. Like it gets so toxic, you are not allowed to type anything in the game. That's how bad it got. You just can't do it. So yeah, I would say you are right on the money with this That's fan base sad. it's yeah. it's horrible that people are that i, I don't know it, it, it sounds it sounds scary to go into that one it's exactly so i was smart i haven't played it and i don't think i ever will good call good call good call First one, what's your second one for me? all right my second one is the uh I guess sonic the hedgehog franchise uh, there's something, there's something very weird about this franchise, this fan base. I don't know. I, I guess I do know what it is. I'm going to explain it now. First off, there's, there's a split between it. There are some people that are diehard 2D Sonic the Hedgehog fans, and then there's diehard 3D Sonic the Hedgehog fans. And I feel like hmm. those people can never agree on anything. You know, the 2D ones are like, those were the only good games. 3D ones are like, these are the way it should be played. And that's weird because obviously a lot of franchises have evolutions where they go from 2D to 3D and it seems to work out okay where the fan base grows with it and they accept it, you know, and uh, no, not for Sonic. And I also feel like Sonic has a situation where they they're, they were very good games back in the day, you know, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, and right. I think a lot of people can agree they're kind of lackluster. But I feel like Sonic fans don't agree that they were lackluster. I feel like every Sonic game that comes out even though they've been pretty trashed, they always kind of talk them up a little better than they were, which is weird to me, you know, because I know you're a fan of the series, but at the same time, it's like, accept, accept what your game is, you know, like Sonic yep. Forces wasn't a very great game, but, you know, you go to the forums and stuff, it's packed about people talking about it and all the qualities and like, yes, there is good qualities, but I feel like you should demand a little better. And then uh, this probably happens with a lot of franchises. I'm not just calling out Sonic on this one, but there's really weird fan art of Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, um, I, yeah it is. There's, there's so many. There's, there's so many. 
there's a lot of weirdos who just draw themselves as the animals of Sonic the Hedgehog, mm-hmm. you know, because you have like foxes with, you know, tails, obviously hedgehogs. Uh, it's, it's weird. Like there's a little thing where you can Google your first name and then the hedgehog and it'll pop up. There'll be art of it. Corey, yep. the hedgehog, Jeremy, the hedgehog, David, the hedgehog, and it'll pop up. There's art of that hedgehog. And I can only imagine what would happen if you went even deeper on, I don't want to mention it, but if you went deeper, you could find some really nasty things. Yeah, there's a rule about that, isn't there? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah. So Sonic, uh, I guess I don't so much hate them as much as I'm staying away from them. Okay. <laughs> I mean, though, yeah, one of one of the greatest internet memes ever was borrowed from the Sonic, the Sonic franchise, and some Sonic fans, and that is, of course, Uganda Knuckles. Do you know the way to the devil? <laughs> Do you know the way? <laughs> There's one meme I can pick to hate. It's that one. Oh no! It's, it's just weird, weird, man. Like, yeah. and I'm not hating anyone's lifestyle. Like, I think furries, you know, that's fine. That's fine. It's just Sonic mm-hmm. furries are just a whole level, a whole different level. A niche on a niche. Yeah, it's true. Whoo. Okay. Jeremy. Well, yeah. So, um, you know, speaking of, you know, not so much hate, but you would admit that, that the Sonic fan base is a somewhat delusional fan base. I completely mm-hmm. agree with you there. I'll go, I'll lend that into another delusional fan base of which I am adjacent to. And that is the Halo fan base. Mm-hmm. These are some of the most snotty, pretentious, <laughs> first person shooter fans. And they haven't made a good game in 10 years. What do you know about good FPSs, Halo fans? You haven't had one in 10 to 15 years. What, ODST? Right. That blue. Reach? Uh, okay, whatever. Guardians? Oh, what? So you could beat the same boss 18 times? And then the last level is you beating five versions of that same boss? Where you play more than half the game, not even as Master Chief? I mean, come on, man. Halo fans are ridiculous. They rag on games like Call of Duty, which, yeah, they copy trends, but they at least try to innovate. Right. You know, it, it, you have you've had games emerge like, you know, Titanfall and, you know, all these other like great shooters that have come out that have actually pushed the push the the envelope, raised the bar on FPSs. And then right. you have like, you know, Halo come out every once in a while. They were crapping them out for a while there. And that's why they got so bad. And they they're coming out and they're not really doing anything. Now, Halo Infinite looks like it's going to be great. I'm excited for it. But again, that's, I can't be, I can't, your fan base isn't built on what Halo Infinite is. Your fan base is built on Halo 1, great. Halo 2, great. Halo 3, great. Halo 4, pretty good. Poop. And then we're gearing up to Infinite, right? So right. I don't understand how you how you maintain that pretentiousness when you have great poop, potentially great, right? Like you have to figure that out. And the fact that they don't, the fact that they raise their their nose up the games like COD or Battlefield or Titanfall or any of those FPSs that are fantastic, whatever, dude, what whatever, freaking Doom and Wolfenstein, like great shooters, man. And it's like, come on, man, ridiculous. Halo fans, get it together. Oh. And your TTK and your multiplayer is outdated. Okay, it shouldn't take seventy-seven bullets to kill a person. That's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, David, what do you what do you uh, have? All right. So this one, I see a lot of the community because I like I follow the games Facebook page and stuff like that, and see a bunch of posts from Reddit when I search Google to see what's going on, and it's. Dead by Daylight fan base. Right, yeah. Calling out your own. Oh, for sure. And it's just because, you know, it's a 1v4. And some people play both. Some people play one or the other. And it's a never-ending fight between everybody. Oh, this isn't balanced. And that's not balanced. Oh, and we should... We should get this killer. Oh, no, they want to be good for the game. We should get this killer and blah, blah, blah. And the more they add to the game, the more things that kind of like go wrong. And the game is like just kind of getting broken. 
more and more. Like Resident Evil came out, super excited for that, played it a lot at that time. But the map wasn't even available for a month at least after it was released. Like, how are you going to sit there and advertise a map that you can't even play for well over a month? I guess that's not community-wise. But either way, that was depressing. But yeah, this the community always in a fight with itself. The only thing that they agree on is behavior needing to do a better job. <laughs> uh, besides that, yeah, it. I just, I just try to avoid it. That's my number two. I, my number one is uh, something I can't avoid because uh, my best friend suffers from it. I hope he's not listening. I'm not saying that he qualifies as this, but somewhat. Uh, this fan base is the most annoying, uh, pretentious fan base in all of gaming, and that would be the PC Master Race. I think you have a general idea of what I'm saying when I bring out those words. It's someone who um, cares more about frames, cares more about the graphics, the how the game runs, and stuff like that, rather than the actual game. They get more enjoyment out of those things than they get out of the game. And it's annoying because they like to brag about having the perfect setup and the best quality of game while not really playing the game. And at the same time, for the people that are high up in the PC gaming, they spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to get a little bit better quality than a Xbox Series X or a PS5. It, it is better. I will admit it is a better quality of gaming but at an exponentially higher price. And I have no problem with spending that money and getting the better quality. You should, if that's your main hobby, get the best quality you can. But when that's your main topic of conversation, it gets a little irksome and annoying. And I hate PC Master Race. Yeah, yeah, cause it's like, cool. You spent 15 grand to mark a 13 year old on a $500 console. Good job. <laughs> right. Good job. Like, that's it. Like, you know, five grand and like the Xbox for 500 does pretty close to it. You know, pretty close. Obviously, PC is better, but Xbox gets there. And to be just when you go on forums and you're hounded, like, oh, get a PC, play the real game, really. It's just. Ugh. Right. Then the question is how many more thousands of dollars or how many more frames, how much more immersive does it make the experience? Like, you know, right, exactly. Like I said, I'm not denying that it doesn't because it does, you know, <laughs> it, it definitely does with the ray tracing and the 144 frames or higher in the and the 4K resolution. Or if you have an ultra wide monitor, or all that, like all this stuff is really nice. Right. But I mean, like, what does the 144 frames do for you for a cutscene that's locked at 30 frames? You know, nothing. like nothing does it doesn't make it any more interesting of, a, of an immersive experience or anything. Yeah. Right. And I will stand by that a good game, even even if it's not 120 frames, it's still it's still a good game. Yeah. You know? I agree. Good one. Hi, right, Jeremy. You're number uh, one. My last one floated. I flirted with a bunch of different fan bases. But for my last one, <laughs> I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a little direct here. And I apologize if it comes off as harsh. But I'm going to lump um I'm gonna say sports game fans, fan bases. So your FIFA's, your NBA's, and your Madden's, stuff like that. I'm going to speak directly to them, guys, so just give me a second. Hey, guys, Jeremy here. I understand you're dumb people. I understand this, okay? Um, it's not your fault. However, what is your fault is when you completely use your stupidity to participate in practices and buying products that exploit you and work as a virus that spreads out to all the other healthy cells of gaming and begins to degrade them as well. Um, you people complain about how a game is the same every year. Yeah, it's a sports game. I'm sorry, was basketball different in 2021 than it was in 2020? No, it was the same. They bounced the ball, they shot the hoop or shoot it into the hoop. Right, yeah, it's the same. Is it exploited? You know, do they have microtransactions? Yeah. Do you pay them? Do you give them the five dollars for that five thousand VC so you can give your character a haircut that won't 
travel or transfer over to the next game that has the basically same thing, but we have to make more money so we can say that haircut again? Huh? Does uh your player character Mobinum 87? Is that is that uh you know, is that something that you're really invested in? These are all in exploits and traps that take advantage of dumb people. And you know that the people are dumb because they protect it. They say, no, 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 it's fair. Five dollars for a haircut is fair. And you say, well, I, I don't I don't think it's fair. Well, how can you say it's fair? Why? Just because I play it? Yeah, because you bought it, guy. You bought it. Right? If 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 the if the company makes crappy movies, you don't keep buying tickets to the same movies or to the other movies they put out. You say, you know what? That Marvel movie sucked. I'm not gonna buy any more Marvel tickets. But you continue to, and you don't think you're dumb. But I'll tell you what, we can help you. Subscribe and like, <laughs> follow thoughts and players. We can set you free. Okay. I've uh, said it yeah. before. Forgive them for they know not what they do. I am here. I will lead you. I will lead you to the light. That's all I have to say. You just called all of them dumb. Why would they subscribe? Because, because they aren't. Because I can make them undone. I can make them undone. And we can make these things better together. But right now, you guys are making it worse because you're dumb. Jay, David, please go. Go ahead, David. I I just want to say that you he, Jeremy plays every band and that kind of comes out mostly to run on it. He's <laughs> like, but uh, yeah. he's okay. he's very close to one of those uh, <laughs> dumb people that he talks about. He's he's, just, he's a few steps higher on that ladder. Only thing separating him is he has a mic. Wait, my Matt. Wait, Madden. I don't I don't buy every Madden. Absolutely not. Okay, you don't buy them. I'd say you you've played the like the betas or whatever when they come out. To mostly knock on them, but still. Yep, yep, yep. I'll give you that. Yep. But uh, <laughs> mine is actually bouncing off of uh Corey's a little bit. Is the whole council war, you know, PC war, anything, whatever. I grew up with a PlayStation One and a PlayStation Two. Right, I loved them. I grew up with an Xbox Three Sixty slash. A one and I really liked the three sixty. The one was all right. And for the last four years, five years, I've mostly solely played on PC. You know what the difference was between all of those? To me, the controller. Like, sure, PC has better gaming abilities. Xbox has the Halos. PS has, you know, God of War. So they all have their limited gaming, whatever the word I'm looking for. But uh, if you don't care about what's on the inside or you don't understand it or anything like that, like I do, I'm just here. I'm just here to play games, man. Yeah, mouse and keyboard is now the most comfortable way for me to play games. And I like I. I hit like Diamond and Apex, for example, on PC, but on Xbox, I can't even get like out of bronze and you can't go down in bronze. OK, <laughs> so just stop hating on everybody else. Just enjoy your games. All right. There's why I've, I've said this before in like levels and levels ago. Why as a community as a whole are we knocking each other? Just stop it. I hate it. I don't want to hate the community I'm in as well. You know? That's that's my final one. It's the whole video game community. The whole video game community yeah, is your most just, hated fan. Yeah. Hey. Like, we need to get over ourselves, man. We're losing a lot of fans today. <laughs> But you know what? You know what? I back that. I back that. As someone that just called millions of people idiots, I completely well, back what David I'll, is saying. I'll say this. Like, everything that we all said is true, but none of that applies to our listeners because they're part of that 
five percent that's not those idiots or part of that community. They're the good people. Exactly. Mm. Right. Yeah. We love our listeners. Absolutely. They're not a part of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you don't want to be part of those people, make sure you become a listener. Right. That's the thing. That's, make sure that's you how do you that. fix it. That's how you fix that's it. That's how you fix it. We can fix it. Um, so that is our round table. You guys let us know who's your most hated gang fan base. Is it the Super Smash people? Is it dumb sports gamers? Or is it all gamers? Everyone. Like David. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to move on to quick fire. We want to highlight one, two, sometimes three games that we've been playing. So I'm a little love. So with quick fires, who will want to give their quick fire first? I'll go. All right. Uh, I got Apex, of course. Uh, I got Beat Saber. I did. I got the Oculus Quest 2. And I'm just right in the brim of being able to beat a lot of the expert songs. But so the most of the experts are just too hard, but the hards are too easy. And mm. as other, you know, brother gamers probably understand, like just being in that cusp of that, it just sucks. Like I want to not just destroy the level, but I don't want to just fail the level, you know? I want to challenge, but it's too hard. But I'm getting there. I'm learning. I'm I'm getting down the, uh, I can't remember the word right now, but yeah, I'm I'm getting it. I'm getting it. That's my quick fire. Cool, cool. Hi, right, uh, I'll go next if that's yeah. cool. Yeah. All right. So I uh, I beat Deathloop, and uh, I thought it was a very enjoyable experience overall. I thought the ending was not as great as it could have been, but still, it left me with a nice feeling overall. I think I definitely like the game. Will be in my top ten of the year at the end of the year. Uh, then played Metroid Dread, got a couple hours into that. I'm liking it so far. I'm back for Blood, which we will be reviewing a little bit later. And I, uh, I'm, I played it. I've had an okay time with it. So I'll give you my thoughts later. Those were my three. Jeremy. Cool, cool. All right. I have been playing a bunch, but um, Yakuza Like a Dragon, still in that, still trying to figure out if I like them in character or not. Um, I have been playing Stardew Valley. Surprisingly, got it for the Switch. Have not stopped playing it. I have had several nights where I've been up to three in the morning playing Stardew Valley. Well, when do you have to um, get up? Nine? Yeah. Okay. So who's okay. your Who's your waifu? My, I don't, I don't have a waifu in that. Yeah. Not yet. No, I'm, I'm too busy making money. Is there anyone that you're kind of like? pining over even a little bit is there, is I, there think, someone? I think maru that relief is her name m-a-r-u is she the blue hair chick no that's um oh, i forgot that's not abigail abigail's the purple haired one but no she's the daughter of the scientist and the carpenter okay okay yeah 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 so hey good luck man appreciate it appreciate it <laughs> make um, that money first though oh yeah i'll tell you what i'm i'm i just hit winner I got about made about 130,000 gold so far and I've saved up about 60, 70,000. So I'm right now I'm replanning the entire layout of my, of my uh, farm. I've got a couple of jars going, I've got some things going so I can freaking, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to have it. I'm going to make so much bleeping money in the second year. So much money, man. Um, yeah. And then, um, I mean, I played the, the Halo beta, but I mostly been playing Wolfenstein, the new order recently, trying to play and beat that game. And I've been having a great time. That is a fabulous game. Um, but that is my quick fire, which means you're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will be back with Was It Worth It? This level of the Thoughts and Players podcast was made possible by your support. If you're enjoying the podcast, please be sure to like, rate, and share the show, as well as contribute to our community questions and segments. Doing so helps the show grow, keeps our content engaging, and most importantly, make sure your voice is heard. Thanks for tuning in. And now, back to the show. And we are back with more thoughts and players. And we are moving on to our favorite segment, your favorite segment. Was it worth it? 
And for this was worth it, Corey alluded to it earlier. We are talking the spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead back for blood. Of course, when we talk about these games, we have five categories of which we rank them in. Being the visual, sound and music, story, technical, and gameplay. But before we get into that, a brief overview of what Back for Blood is. It is a zombie survival game. If you've heard of Left 4 Dead, it is that. Yes. <laughs> so, so, with that out the way, let's get into talking about this game. And we will start off with the visuals. Now, I have questions. I played this on Series X. Corey, what did you play this on? Series, Series X. X as well. David, what did you play it on? Series, no, on the PC. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So, uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty good. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk visuals. What were the in visual impressions that we have of the game? Hmm? I they... I actually I like them. Yeah. It, you know, everything looks pretty pretty clean. You know, and. <laughs> The design of everything looks great. Uh, I really love the, I forget the actual names, but like the special infected. I, re I love the design. And uh, I mean, this is this is just a plain looking game. Yeah. You're talking about like, um, so I think in the game they call them the Ridden, right? Yes, yep. Yep, so they have the one with like, the, like the sledgehammer arm essentially and they have the one you know the ones that blow up and they work everywhere yep. all that stuff yep yep yeah uh the creature design is really cool yeah um Corey, what were what was your impressions of the visuals um i think they're they're pretty good not mind blowing but definitely on the um upper end of like decent looking games you know i was not like any part where i ran across where i was like ah this is ugly looking but nothing that really blew me away i guess but yeah, I love my... Yeah. Um, I think for me, it was kind of the same thing. Nothing, like, absolutely blew me away, but it looked pretty good. Like David said, it looked clean. I liked the design of a lot of stuff. Um, the the ridden, as they call them, kind of the... How the, the guns actually, like, to me, it kind of, they just, they look... They looked nice. They looked and felt nice. These are the ones I've been able to play with so far. So uh, visuals, yeah, nothing that, that took me away, but I feel comfortable. It's, it was a very comfortable visual feeling with this game. Yeah. Um, so let's move on to sound and music. Now, of course, this is a zombie game. Sound usually plays a role in zombie games. Um, David, how would you describe the sound? What was your, what's your impressions of it? Um, I'll tell you the sound direction is very good in this game. Uh, knowing where the the special riddens are coming from is good to know, especially when you're trying to play the very hard difficulties. And um, you know the guns sound like the guns. The music, I can't remember any of it, but I know that it is for it sets the mood yeah. appropriately. So I, I think they've done a good job on this section as well. I I haven't had any issues with with anything sound and music. Yeah. What about you, Corey? What was your impressions of sound and music? Yeah, David was was pretty much spot on. I I actually don't remember any of the music either, but I do kind of feel like the guns felt powerful. You know, mm -hmm. especially like some of the upgraded ones. I felt like I, I was really shooting something. It felt good. Um, one, I guess, maybe major, maybe not that major, was the voice acting a little bit. It felt very uh, B quality. I don't know if that was on purpose. You know, almost like not as bad as like Resident Evil original, but it was it was kind of it was kind of cornballish. Campy, and, uh, would you say maybe? Yeah, yes, yes. Camp <laughs> Close to campy. It, it okay. wasn't campy. It wasn't campy. But the way it was delivered made me feel like. They should have maybe went for campy. I don't know. And like the lines that they delivered were kind of, you know, it's a zombie apocalypse. Uh, people just died. And then the one chick is is cracking a joke. And it was kind of weird. You know, <laughs> it was like, this isn't really a time for a joke. You know, right. you just you just Somebody got down died. and I saved your life by just a hair. Cool. You know, we just we just fought a, a 60 foot zombie. And 
We'll be at home in time for dinner. Huh? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's it. You know, uh, it can be kind of cute, though. You know, depending how you look at it. I don't really get upset at those kind of things. So I, I thought it was kind of right. cute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think they were trying to go. I felt my first impression, especially with dialogues, they were trying to go for something campy. and just kind of missed a mark here and there. Um, but yeah, like as far as the sound of the guns, the guns sounded awesome. Um, you know, the sound when you hear, you know, when you maybe like startle a horde of, of you know, some birds and a horde starts and you hear them like coming from a distance, you know, that whole thing was great. And yeah, the music, it was a tone setter in the background. It didn't, nothing really jumps out, but you know, like it's kind of like that invisible glue that kind of held the whole experience together, you know, and made it, made it believable to some extent when you're playing the game. So I think I think they did their job. Sound of Music just did their job. You know, it's not anything extravagant. They just kind of did their job. That was my impression of it. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, let's move on to story. Now, um, what exactly is the story of this game? We should I should preface that the story is or the game is is broken into four acts in total, uh, but the fourth act only has one level. Uh, but it's it's yeah, but it's four acts and each act has several different chapters to it, except that last one. Um, so that's kind of like how the narrative structure of the game is set up. But what would you guys say about the story? What was your impressions of it? Um, I actually haven't completed level four yet, but I've completed the rest of them. And. I I like it. I like it's they did a lot better in this than they did for Left for Dead. And yeah. I really like that there's multiple, multiple levels of this one, like, campaign. Unlike, you know, the Left 4 Deads, they had four levels for each map. And that was, like, that was it. Mm-hmm. You know? And I really like that they have all these cleaners, that they call them, the survivors. They all have, like, different kind of abilities. They all bring something to the table. So it's, you know, you can have decent set of four playing together and then if you play four different cleaners you can have like an op team going you know i know there's you know still trying to figure that stuff out but yeah i th- I think it's they did a great job with this one I, yeah. I just i just i keep saying the same i don't know it's like i'm on repeat or something. <laughs> um yeah so this game came out what two days ago which mm-hmm. means we Almost, haven't had the well, yeah. Right, you got to play it a little bit early. You bought the deluxe edition, but um, which means I didn't have as much time to play it as I would like. So I'm kind of like towards the a- end of Act One. I don't know what's happening in the story. I'm assuming we're trying to survive, trying to escape wherever we started off on, and probably go to a safe spot. Uh, the opening yeah. cutscene was sweet. That was really cool. And like the mm-hmm. bar area where you were talking to the dude and everything happens, that was really cool. Yeah. And after that, I, I I've got nothing. I don't I don't know. I'm making my way through <laughs> levels and getting to safe houses, and that's right. that's the You're story so far. Down. I don't I don't think this genre of game really um, needs story or excels in story for the most part. Right. Right. So um, it's not something that I would really factor into the last like my final like idea of the game. So uh, yeah. yeah, pass. Yeah. It definitely doesn't weigh heavy into it, but to kind of going back to what David, I think they've at least so far what I've played, they've handled the story quote unquote better than in like, you know, previous titles like left for dead or evolve. So I think they're becoming better storytellers. And I think back for blood has a decent enough story for what it is, which is a zombie horror killer. Like, right. that's really what the game is, you know. Um, but they're at right. least trying to do some story things, right? Backstory of the characters sometimes influences um, the different um, buffs or, or you know, debuffs or whatever they get. So, and they're trying there in some aspect. Um, let's move on to technical. Guys, what was your technical experience with this? David, you're playing on PC. That's usually always where, if there's issues, they crop up there. So what was your technical experience with the game? Uh, the only issue that I had, which might just be my computer, because when you start a game, it puts everything on high, and I haven't turned it down, is during the story, it would uh, skip a lot. Mm, yeah. So... Uh, all the sound and voice acting and stuff would be spitter spatty and the 
uh, scenes would kind of jump around a bit. But besides that, well, there is one. I My game crashed because it said I didn't have the uh, anti-cheat, so I couldn't play the game, so I had to uninstall and reinstall it. But now, besides that, I haven't had any other technical <laughs> issues. <laughs> have you guys yeah. had any? Uh, no, it's ran perfect for me. Um, I don't know if it's technical. I was telling you guys earlier that when I went to play the game, it said, hey, do you want to you need to upgrade? And I said, OK. And it said, yeah, it's only uh, 36 gigabytes. And I said, uh, what? Um, <laughs> and then it took all it, it took all day, almost all day to download it. So I had way less time to play the game than I originally planned for. So that wasn't great. But besides that, I haven't run into any issues in, in, in regards to when the game is running. So. Um, so that leads us to the gameplay, which is really mostly what games like this are about. How does the guns feel? Um, what's the what's the combat like? What's the levels and all that stuff like? And um, gameplay. How would you guys describe this? Would you say it's just simply a better? Is it simply just a better Left for Dead? Simply, yes. But uh, they've added. A lot. There's the uh, the uh, the cards that you have. Yeah. You know, you have to you have to set up the campaign decks, the swarm decks, you know, everything like that. I think that is a brilliant idea because oh, yeah. the way that so many people that are going to play this game play so differently, and that's major, especially like I said before, like in the harder difficulties and stuff. Like you're gonna need somebody that's good at being a medic. You're mm-hmm. gonna need somebody that can like just run through and get some things. And like my favorite thing, I uh, I think her name's Holly. I love just running around and just beating zombies with a bat. So like my deck is just stamina deck. So like oh I kill a zombie with my melee weapon, I get more stamina. And it's just I'm, it's it's great. It's it's so fun. Um, gameplay the uh, the HUD I guess is very simple for very easy to understand. It's not in the way. Um, Zombies, you know, everything attacking you. Sometimes it's frustrating if you get attacked by the swarm and you can't move. But, uh, you know, that's what your teammates are for. But, yeah, it's just, I guess, simply, it's just, it's easy and mundane. Unless you're sitting there trying to beat nightmare mode. <laughs> you know, you, you just play this game. And they really made this game so it's really replayable. Mm-hmm. And like the yeah, the multiplayer also, and it's you know four v four. You have to sit there and survive as long as you can. Is is so much fun. Like I haven't played it on the uh, game game yet, but I played it in the beta, and it's it's so much fun just destroying a team with the uh, special ridden. But uh, like the cards, you have to purchase them with these points that you get at the end of every level. Yep. And there's, um, I forget what they call them, the line decks, I think. There's like eight cards in each line. And the points that you get, you just have to, you know, some of them cost five, some of them cost 100. You don't get to choose what cards you want, but you do get to choose the line that you want to complete because there's three lines. And if you complete one, it goes away and another one comes. So who knows how many cards are even in this game? Yeah. So it's it's a very replayable game. You can sit there and just go through on easy mode if you want, collect the points, or you just play multiplayer. There's so many different aspects of this game that you won't get bored of this game if this is your kind of game. Well said. Corey, what about you? What was your impressions of gameplay? Yeah, um, so if you've ever played a game like this, it plays a lot like every you know four person defeat the horde move through the level type of game i do think the card system is very uh unique i don't i don't play all these type of games i don't know if it's been done before but it feels very unique and i really do enjoy it especially when you beat a a chapter of an act and you get to add another card yep so it's like you're really like like david like you said you're building a deck of these powers and you can definitely make your character how you want to make them which is which is an awesome part of the game uh, besides that, the gunplay feels really good. It's got, um, not on PC, I'm sure, but on console, it definitely has, like, snap aiming, kind of like Red Dead Redemption, mm-hmm. which um, I think I kind of prefer aiming now, like, that way. 
it just makes just makes it a lot easier for me. You know, I don't really have to put my skills to the test as much. But uh, right. yeah, the level design seems pretty good early on. You know, not really too many complaints with that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's nice that it seems like there's a couple not different paths, but I know there was a couple spots where I was able to kind of platform my way above zombies and never activated them. And kind of was right. able to skip that part, which was which right. was kind of nice. Um, besides that, yeah, it's it's almost everything you would expect in a sort of four PVE type game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely um, yeah the card system, building the you know the deck of abilities um, for your character is like just a fantastic idea to implement in the game, and you know being able to build that deck progressively throughout the game, being able to do certain uh achievements or certain things in order to get stronger cards you know and and add even more buffs to your character different stuff like that that's a great idea um yeah one thing i like about this game and it may sound weird but stay with me now and i think corey will know exactly what i'm talking about it's not it's not a scary game and <laughs> right oh, i agree yeah and that and that helps right so it's there's a lot of joy in being able to just go through and mow down hordes of zombies, um, you know, with with your three compadres, if you have three, or your three computer compadres. Uh, so, yeah, it, the, the gameplay for it has been really fun. Uh, compared to something like a Left 4 Dead, uh, it is, you know, it's it's been an improvement, I would say, right? Uh, and Left 4 Dead was absolutely a blast. I believe this game is going to be a blast. Unlike... Left 4 Dead, there was less of a live service type of elements to games back then, so I assume they're going to be able to add even more content and more things onto this game in the, in the coming months or years that just make it, like, you know, super, super fun game to play with people. I um, I want to ask something to David about the gameplay. Now, I know Left 4 Dead had a, uh, a system with the zombies where it was random when they came out. Mm-hmm. This doesn't have that, right? Or does no, you, you get to choose what special infected you want to play for the. I'm, I'm just talking about like the normal story oh. based mode, like Left 4 Dead. Like it was uh, dynamic. You know, you might go into this area and there might be a horde that comes after you, um, one game but not the other. This one almost feels like all the zombies are kind of placed where they're supposed to be. I could be wrong. Do you know anything about that? Um, I don't know too much, but I do know that there are certain areas where you're gonna call the horde like no matter what like when you're opening it up like a certain door you have to like blow the tank or something like that but they're all there is other areas where there's these security doors and those doors are going to be random every time you play and there's like there's cars that have alarms that are going to be random and like the crows okay. which jimmy mentioned right. earlier they're going to be at random spots so i i can't say much for left for dead because i didn't play that like uh very deep like i didn't pay attention to uh patterns and stuff right but i do know this this one it, it it's both it's randomed and set okay because what i'll say about this then comparing it for left for dead it felt like when i played left for dead at any point i could be like overridden by zombies and this one felt almost like uh like marking like checking boxes like i went to one area killed the zombies went to the next area killed the zombies i didn't really get that feeling of getting overwhelmed by them, which I feel like that's what Left 4 Dead was really shooting for. So um, I need to be right back. Yes. I want to keep talking. Yeah, but um, yeah, so I mean, maybe it gets that way further into the game. I I don't know. Like I said, it's kind of like one disappointment on the gameplay section. It was just I, I felt overwhelmed at Left 4 Dead and this one felt like you know, I'm going through the level and I know where the zombies are going to be. They didn't really take me by surprise at all. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, yeah, kind of having that that kind of almost dread feeling, I guess, sometimes for Left 4 Dead where you'd be someplace and then, like, just, uh-oh, you know, a horde's been triggered and now we've got to figure out something that we weren't anticipating. Um, yeah, from from my experience so far, Back for Blood haven't had that either. But, yeah, again, it might, it might happen in the later stages of the game. So, you know, yeah. Um, that's something to figure out. But it looks like compared to their, I mean, Left 4 Dead obviously was a hit. But again, this is the same studio that also did Evolve. And that was an absolute dumpster fire. It seems <laughs> like they're, they've kind of recovered and come back from that. And, you know, which is a good thing. You know, you give them time, give them 
time and a chance to figure stuff out, come up with a different idea. Now, again, they just went back to what worked, which was zombie killing. But again, they figured out a bunch of different new things to add to the game. And so, you know, you have your improvement and innovation right there, you know? Oh. Yeah. So um, let's see here. Was it worth it? That's what it comes down to, right? The valuation, the value proposition. This is what we give the people. Back for Blood, brand new, $59.99, standard edition. You buy it brand new. It is also on the Game Pass of Xbox, right? It is also available on there if you do have that as well. Um, what do we want to give the valuation for this game? Is this a was it worth it? Is this worth a $60 pickup? Yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I paid 100 for it. Oh. Yeah. And it was and it's been worth every dollar so far. So far, yeah. yeah. I enjoy it. I know I'm going to have a blast when I uh finally play the multiplayer and I'm excited. It's just like I said the re the replay value of this game is way up there. And even on the easier difficulty of the campaign, it was hard at times. And I'm yeah. playing with two other people that are very competent in the game. Like my brother played uh, Left 4 Dead uh, competitively. And he says this game is, you know, harder. So trying to figure out how to beat the hardest difficulty is that's going to be a challenge. And that's going to keep the replay value up. So it's, okay. it's, worth, it's worth it. Corey. Yeah. So, Jeremy, you asked, you asked a little bit earlier if is like simply just a better Left 4 Dead. Mm -hmm. And and I would I would say yes, it's simply a better Left 4 Dead. Um, Left 4 Dead was almost like the first of its kind when it came out, and since then we've had so many of these types of games. Like really, we have. There was just that dinosaur one that came out on Xbox. There was Strange Brigade, uh, Call of Duty with the zombie mode, Horde mode. There's feels it feels like there's so many of these modes that to me, this one with the card system does stick out a little bit. But unless you're a fan of this genre. Like, I I don't recommend it. Um, I would not pay $60 for it. I got it on Game Pass. Um, I don't know if I'll keep playing it just because I feel like I, I play this type of game. And the map design is fine. The zombies are cool. But it doesn't stick out enough to where I'm like, man, I've really got to see myself a little further. So, in my opinion, $60, no Game Pass, definitely give it a try. You know, definitely give it a try on Game Pass. It, it, it's quality enough to deserve that. And if you like this type of game, you're going to fall in love with it. If you're burnt out on it, I don't think this is one to rejuvenate it. Yeah, th that dinosaur when you're talking about Second Extinction. Yes. Yeah, I played that one, did not go back to it. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> but that 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 game had a lot of its own problems. Right, um, right. Yeah, as far as as far as this, um, you are getting a very particular type of game. Uh, I feel like this game, compared to Left 4 Dead, when Left 4, it, it was right time, right place, right. And mm -hmm. Left 4 Dead was a revelation, and the games have kind of they've built their own genre and kind of became a bit more niche. Um, Sixty dollars for this type of game—that's a big ask, I think. Would I say it's worth it at sixty? Uh, probably not. Give me it at forty nine ninety nine, and I, I think I think it's good there. I think it's, I think double A, right? That's kind of like where it feels. Um, and so yeah, but I'd say if you're buying it brand new, maybe wait for still Game Pass. Like Corey said, definitely. I think this is probably one of the better titles on Game Pass. Period. If you have it and you're looking for games to play, yeah, yeah. for sure. Like I, I know I said it's not worth it but it's a very very quality game yeah 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 i yeah. think just the genre the genre it's in is not the genre i want to play right now like i said there's so many games in it you know the alien frontiers just came up it's just it seems like every month there's a new type of game so yeah. if zombies are really your thing then get this one but if aliens are your thing you have a game for that if dinosaurs are your like there's so many of them so yeah you know check it out for sure because it's it yeah. is qual it, yeah. it's well made 
Yeah, exactly. And I think uh, from what I was reading, average playtime vested in this game is somewhere between 8 to 15 hours. You're looking at a game that if you're playing the main story, it's not too much of a time sink. You're right. right. But if you again, if you enjoy this game, you're going to play it over and over and over and over and over again. So, right. Um, yeah, that is kind of what we have for Was It Worth It for Back for Blood. You guys let us know if you've played it, what you think about it and uh, all that other goodness. But we are going to move on to our next segment. Could you please? And this is where we ask hypothetically, theoretically, for someone or some place to do something. <laughs> and uh, uh, for could you please, you know, I'll start it off because mine is per- fairly simple and quick. Um, I can't believe I'm doing this. EA. Oh. Could you please also add Jade Empire to Xbox Game Pass for the console? You have it on there for the PC for God knows why. Can you also just add it to the Xbox? Because they're all part of the same thing, kind of. That would really help. That is my could you please. I think you can buy it for like $10, Jeremy. But I have it for Xbox Game Pass. Just put it on the Xbox. <laughs> why would I play it just on my Fair PC? Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> it's nonsense. <laughs> Uh, I can go. Mine's mine's fairly simple too. This is gonna be a quick right. one. Uh, so my PC master race friend, you know, sold his consoles. He only has a PC now. I mm-hmm. only really have consoles. I don't play on my PC. Um, can we just make crossplay a standard? Wholeheart. Please to let's go. Please God, it is, it is so annoying when a good game comes out and you know it's a multiplayer game or it has a multiplayer aspect and it's like, hey. Can we play this together? Because we used to play all our games together, and we look it up. Uh, no crossplay isn't available, but it might be coming in the future. I've heard that for so many games, and it just nope. never happens. I'm still yeah. waiting on games that are over a year old that said, "Yeah, we'll be, we'll get crossplay," yeah. and it just it hasn't happened, and I'm sick of it. You know, it's I, I know some console manufacturers, Sony doesn't really want it because it's going to hurt their bottom line. But, like, be for the gamers. You know, people are going to play on the console, like David said, coming back to that, and the controller they like for that generation. You know, I really like the PS5 controller right now. So I want to buy my games on the PS5. So let me play with my Xbox buddies. Let me play with my PC buddies. Just please let crossplay become a a definite thing that just happens now. Agreed. Agreed. Mine is also quite simple. So, so we know the uh, N64 thing is coming to the Switch, whatever, and they announced a few games that are going to start with it. So, Switch players, could you please play the crap out of the F-Zero X one and show <laughs> that it is still a relevant game and people there want a new one? There you go. If we put in the hours, I'm sure they're tracking it. We need to, we need to show that we'll, we'll be there for a new one. You better buy this game when it finally comes out. Oh, I will. Wholeheartedly. At, Even if I F, end up hating F-Zero it. F-Zero 2030. <laughs> like, you better buy this game. <laughs> I'll be there. F-Zero 2045. There we go for Could You Please. Very quick. Very simple. Which means we're getting a raid for game time. And ladies, gents, chickens, ducks, hens, roosters. I think a couple of geese. We have a new game of which we are bringing, brought to you by our game master, Corey. Ma. Uh, so, Corey, take it away. All right. So, we have a new game called Synonym Roll. Synonym. Ah. So, if you know what a synonym is, it's a – what is a synonym? It's when you take a word and you're able to insert a very similar similar word, Correct. A synonym so. is, a, is a word that is similar in meaning, yeah. That's right. So if you're, like, writing a paper for school and you don't want to use too many of the same words, you just go online, Google, and type in the word, and then you're able to spice up your paper a little bit. Right. Well, what I, I did is – oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I've never done that. Right. No one has. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did is I took 11 uh, franchises of games, and I just put them through the Google synonym uh role i guess you know i'm i'm switching up the titles a little bit so i have 11 games i think this should go kind of quick and i'm going to say their new alternate title and you've got to tell me what the original title is um whoever has the most by the end of the 11 wins 
Um, and because and this just, is an, I'll go ahead. We just we just blurted right out. Just come yes. right in with first it. First one, first one All to right. guess it. There's no turns here. All David, right. I just want to say, uh, congrats on your win, Jeremy. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, it is spooky season. We are in October, so I did lean a little bit towards horror games. Not all of them, but a few of them. So just to give you a little hint. And if you okay. absolutely cannot get the game, then I think I'll just give you one of the words or something like that. We'll figure it out as we go. But let's just jump right okay. into it. We have 11 games. Right. First one up is Idol of Strife. I-D-O-L, Idol of Strife. God of War. Jeremy, great one. Oh, Jer- oh that was good. I was thinking like patience and what, not like <laughs> God. <laughs> That was impressive. That took, uh, like I said, I pre-tested this on my buddy. That took him a while. All right. So, yeah, yeah. next one up. Habitation of the Unanimated. Right. Habitation of the un- Unanimated. House, House of Dead. Oh, my gosh, Jeremy. You are a wordsmith, my friend. Yeah, yeah. House no, of the Dead. These Ooh. words I've never heard of before. <laughs> All right, well, you've definitely heard of these two words, David. <clears throat> Game number three, Mute Slope. What? Mute Slope. Is, how's the mute spelled? Silent Hill. M- yes, Jared. Oh, oh he's God. going for the clean sweep oh here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I, should, uh. <laughs> Maybe I should have made it a team game where you both, you know, try to get the best out of 11 with the same – David, a little bit of David, you got this. You got this comeback. All right. You got this back with her. Right, right. All right. The fourth game. The malevolence, not outside. Not outside. The evil inside. No. Can Close. Yes. Okay. Close. Fine. I got nothing. Um the malevolence, not outside. You really were so close, Jeremy. The, the evil yeah. within? Is that what he the said? The evil within. That is correct. I thought I said that. No, you said... Wait, what, did you, what did Jeremy say? I said the evil within. You said the evil inside. Ah, uh, okay. Yes, oh, yeah. you were very, very close. And that... Could be a momentum changer right here. All right. Fifth game. Infinite absence of light. What? And endless dark? No. Close. Infinite absence of light. Dark zero? No. David was David was pretty close. I don't know. I don't know what game has that word. Wait, say it again. Infinite absence of light. So really, the title is two words long. Absence of light is one section, and infinite right. is the first. Dying light. So, no. No, that doesn't make any sense. No. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm, saying, I'm, saying, I'm losing. I'm losing. Infinite, it. not dying, Jeremy. Infinite. Infinite. Yeah. Absence of light. Infinite absence. Of little hint here guys this one is quite a bit older we have mentioned it on the show though a couple times Uh, and like i said this is a spooky one and david you were you were really were so close i know like if you actually just say out loud what you said again and kind of rework it maybe not rework it but infinite Endless of light. Close, yeah, very close. Yeah, endless, endless something. Not, no, it's not endless, but it's oh. a synonym for endless. Um, ah, gentlemen. All right, I guess I got to give you another hint. Um, yeah. It was on the GameCube. God, man, it's, game, it's on the GameCube. Man. It was a horror game. Who remembers the games on the GameCube? Uh, There's only like five horror games on the GameCube, so hit <laughs> four of them were Resident Evil. So. <laughs> right. So think of the last one that was made by Silicon Knights. 
Um, I think that helps me. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm blanking on this. There one. was an insanity meter. Oh. Uh, yes. David, come on. You got this. You'll only be one down if you get this. Come on. Infinite absence of light. There was an insanity meter. I know as soon as someone says the name, I'm going to be mad. I think we're going to have to move on, gentlemen. Yeah, we're going to. I think you guys are going to kick yourself for this. Eternal darkness. Ooh. That's uh, kind of a niche game. I'm sorry. I, I threw it in there. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Next one. Uh, David, you are still in the running. So just got to get a couple more of these. Creature intersection. Creature intersection. Monster Creature. Monster? No. Creature intersection. Creature intersection. Creature um, intersection. Uh, this this isn't this isn't Animal Crossing. That's correct. Ah, there that nice. is correct. Nice. I was like, what's another word for intersection? <laughs> um, right, this one's a toughie, guys. Terminal imagination. Terminal Term- imagination. Imagination. Terminal imagination. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Terminal imagination. Deadly thoughts. Very, very big franchise. Very big franchise. Very big franchise. Terminal. Imagination. Hmm. And it's a big franchise. Huh. Uh, um. Oh man. Oh man. This isn't. This isn't. This one's really tough. This one I typed into the old Google machine, and it did not spit out good words. It was. Uh, but it's a big franchise. It's a huge franchise of games huge Hmm. terminal imagination almost as big as they get it almost not quite the biggest but almost final fantasy final fantasy perfect wow those weren't the best words i apologize but you did get it you did get it 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 does make sense but not the best sense right all right, next one up. Huge heist vehicle. What? Grand Theft Auto? Grand the- <laughs> yes, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Huge heist okay. vehicle. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, David, I think you can tie this up if you get the next three right. Oh, Let's bullseye. do this, David. Bullseye, All let's right. go. <laughs> the geriatric parchment. Civilization? No. The geriatric parchment. I don't even know what that means. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> That's what my buddy said to you. Which, which part don't you know what it means? The first one. Geriatric? Yeah. It means old. Ah, ah, the Elder Scrolls. Jeremy. Ooh. Oh, my God. That was great. That was really good. That was really good. Um, You have won the game, but we are going to do the last yeah, two. I'll, just I want to hear them. Just for uh, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and this this next one is is real rough, but uh, I'm gonna give it to you anyways. Heavenly body of struggle art. Heavenly body. Heavenly heavenly body. Heaven heavenly body of struggle art. Struggle art. Is this like a niche game? No. Um, this no. Is, this hurts my head. Heavenly body, I think, is a great clue. Struggle arts a little tougher. That's what I think of for like God. Heavenly body. Yeah. Instead of idol. I want Close. To uh, think more outer space. What someone would call like heaven, like a heavenly body. 
heavenly bodies is and it's is it it's a one body or multiple bodies one body heavenly okay. body heavenly body of struggle art <laughs> okay 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 um, I don't think they would have. I don't think they would have sold as much if they called it this. I definitely would I not. I don't understand the struggle art part. Um, if, if, all right, so the struggle art part was the last word of the game is one word, but I had to break it down so the synonyms synonyms actually worked. Right, I got you. So struggle and art are technically like one word in this game but i'm separating okay. them so like think okay. of struggle and think of art and then you get your final word of this game blank of blank heavenly body of struggle art right like like i said with heavenly body think of like outer space right 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 what might you call a heavenly body out there um um let's see um, and to be fair, there's not that much stuff in outer space in terms of different objects. So ex exactly, <laughs> you, exactly. You can kind of narrow it down. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can definitely. I can definitely narrow it down in that regard. But if it's uh, can, the, I can. marrying it with the struggle art is where I'm struggling. Just right? let's just talk it through, David. What's some stuff you might find in outer space that you would consider uh, a heavenly body, a, a body at all? Sun. That could be one, but it's not. Go on. Uh, that's it. Planets. Uh, okay. Another word? Another word for planet? You got me. You don't know another word for a planet? <laughs> another word for planet <laughs> rock? World? There you go, Jeremy. World yes. of struggle art. World of Warcraft? World of Warcraft. Sorry about that one, guys. Okay. Okay. That was. That was. That was. Uh... <laughs> it's not my best work. You know, we're we're testing this game out. We're learning. Yeah. We're we're yep. learning the burden here. Yep. Um, last <laughs> one, just just uh, just for fun here is um, monarchy, blood pumping organs. Monarchy. Kingdom Heart. Kingdom Hearts. That's correct. There you go. There you go. David. Nice. David, that was respectable. You came back quite a bit. Uh, final score was six to four. Not there bad. So not bad at all. Not my bad at all. Good job, true. gentlemen. There you go. You uh, you did much better. Not that I anticipated, but then I hoped. I thought maybe it would be a struggle, but uh, you 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 mastered the struggle art. Yeah, I did better than Good I job. thought I was going to. <laughs> there we go. Synonym roll. New game. That was, Let us that know hurt. what you guys. It was fun. It was fun. Okay, good, good. What you thought of that one? Uh, which means, uh, moving from that, I'm not sure me and David are able to do it because we have to use so much brain there. <laughs> but we are going to move on to final thoughts. And this is when we give one last thought or point we want to make about something either related or unrelated to this level of the podcast. So, who would like to give their final thoughts first? You guys need a break? Want me to go real quick? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I was on the side of Metroid Dread for $60 is too much because no other 2D Castlevanias launched for 60 bucks. Now, I've only played a few hours. I'm not saying that this game is worth $60, but I would say that they met 2D Metroidvanias have the right to be priced at 60 At first, I was saying, hey, no other game does it. Why is this game doing it? But I've, I've since kind of changed that stance a little bit. If your game is good, it doesn't matter if you're in 2D Castlevania. It doesn't matter if you're a 4 PVE zombie game. It doesn't matter if you're an, only an online game. If your game is good, it could be worth 60 bucks. So we'll find that out next level if it's worth 60 or not to me. But I think it's okay that they priced it at 60. It's up for us to determine if it was worth it. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, but the Pokemon hey, remakes aren't worth sixty. Oh wow! Facts. I just want to say that. Okay. Say it now, David. Uh, what is your final thought? Um, my final thought is be who you are, because eventually somebody's gonna like that person. That's my final thought. 
Very nice. Uh, my final thought is, um, yeah, please just put Jade Empire on regular <laughs> Xbox Game Pass. It's like, because I want to play it, but I'm not. I'm not oh going to play it on God. my PC, and I'm not going to go through the rigmarole of connecting my Xbox controller. Be, I'm not going to do it. Just put it on regular Xbox. Please. 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 All right. Um, that is it. That is my final thought. That is that is it for level 38 of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you liked what you heard, please subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast service. You can like the podcast on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash thoughts and players like it's all one word we are on instagram at thoughts.players we are on youtube where we post videos including videos of this very podcast we are on twitter thoughts players 2 is the handle i believe Mm -hmm. and uh we are also tiktok we're on there thoughts.players we post memes and stuff uh we want to thank everyone again for tuning in And we will catch you on the next level.